one. Hello there, and welcome to today's live stream, all about <laughs> finding your center and making sure that you're positive and happy whilst you're studying, and to really help you get the best out of just everything and make sure you get the best outcomes you can possibly do, whilst avoiding stresses and terrible mental health. So Tim, would you like to discuss a bit more about what we're talking about and then we can introduce ourselves? Yeah, and uh, I also want to refer back to a wonderful introduction. I love the timing of it. That was so good. I thought we were at 10 seconds. I was clearly misplaced there. Uh, yes, hello, welcome. I am Tim, and today we are going to talk about something that I am really passionate about, and that is, um, you know, finding a center, we've called it. Is that what we've called it? Yeah, That's that what is what it. we've called it. It's actually, I've realized, I think that might be a Dutch system. Is that an English expression as well? Finding your centre. I think it. I don't. I don't think I've heard it very often, but it definitely is something worth doing. And so, mm. we can make it an English thing if needed, but we can make it everyone's thing. We'll make it the Derby way of doing things and looking after yourself. I think that's the key of what we'll talk about today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. I so, just realised I'm looking away from the camera, so I'm swapping things around. Very technical. So. Uh, when I when I was thinking about what topic we could potentially talk about this week, I was asking students, and I, I've been asking students uh, before the workshops that we deliver, how are they finding live, how they're studying at the moment, and the common answer that we received was generally, it's hard or stressful or challenging or struggling, and mm. I think I don't think you'd agree with this team as well. We're at the point in year now, and you've just come back, you've come back to studying in uh, February. And you're now back in the heat of the mix. Is that the right phrase? Actually, have they have they come back in February? Uh, yeah, no, they have. Not come back yeah. in person, but started studying again. And often yeah, people do. Yeah. Other courses do differently. So often, though, people are back in the mix of things, and the assessments are coming up again thick and fast. And you're expected to keep pace, and you've lost the novelty of "Yay, we're back!" and now you're in it. So yeah. it's a really good time, I think, to discuss this. I don't know if you'd agree, Tim. Absolutely, I think the. It's like this non-stop battle, isn't it? You've just done it. We talked about it before the stream. Uh, you've just done your assessments. You've just got uh, one of your grades back, which you're happy with. Or at least I assume you're happy with I am passing happy it. With it. Yeah. So, um, you know, you've got that that sort of break that you've had from regular studying, and now you're flowing straight back into you know what are your new assessments? If you're in year three, for example, this is probably your most uh, regular year three, September start of year three. This is probably your most important uh, semester coming up. Um, and actually, you know, it's uh, for all the years, the second semester tends to be the more impactful one. So what we're talking about today, I think is genuinely really important. It's not just students as well, Alex. You will know when we talk to colleagues and, to, uh, you know, just random people that we talk to, like family members and friends and all that. Everybody's a bit down and it's so understandable. So it's a really good time, I think, to try and lift some spirits and give some tips and ideas on, you know, how can you actually find your center and power on and get yeah. stuff done that you want to get done. That's basically what the uh, the live stream is about today. Yeah, definitely. It's such an important thing. It can help you in so many different ways. And I think that is really important. So yeah, this week's topic of the week is, as Tim said, it's all about finding a center and using and ca carrying on in the times that we're in at the moment. and finding the motivation to keep going and we keep going the stamp? positively we've got the stamp we've got excellent. the stamp tim excellent so the first thing that i'd like to discuss with you tim is a bit it's just to explain and explore a little bit why it's such an important thing to do and what the benefits of finding your center and keeping calm and carrying on are yeah it's not even necessarily about be keeping calm uh, or even carrying on I think the um, the key to what we're talking about today is something that, in general, as society, we've got more and more attention for this, right? It's about looking after ourselves, understanding our well-being, understanding our, I would almost call it uh, mental hygiene in a way. You know, we all know personal hygiene is important. We have a shower every day, we wash our hair, we use deodorant, whatever, whatever. I think the idea of mental hygiene is becoming more and more relevant and people are beginning to understand that a lot more as well. So how do you make sure that you look after yourself? How do you actually um, have that sort of ability to cope with whatever is going on with you and how do you react to certain circumstances that you're in? And it's so important, in particular, you know, we're the skills team, we're here to talk about how you achieve success during your academic studies. 
if you are good at looking after your own mental health and your own mental well-being, then that is such a plus because you're not going to get knocked off track. You're not going to, um, you know, feel real pressure and difficulty because you've actually got that bit of broader understanding of how to deal with things. One of the things I love, by the way, that we've done in the last few years with the well-being service um, is yoga classes. Mm. Right, just the idea. When I grew up, I'm not going to lie. The um, one of my friends' fathers, one of my friends, his father, uh, started doing yoga. He was a very stressful, uh, in a very stressful job. He was an entrepreneur. He had several shops, and he said, "Oh, I'm going to do yoga," and we sort of laughed at it. You know, I was like, "Ah, that's silly. That's silly." This was the '90s. Actually, it helped him to stay grounded and to cope with whatever pressure that he was under. Um, and I think that's so important. You know, have you, did you know, Alex, here's a did you know that we've got to throw in there. Did you know you could do yoga with goats? Uh, well, I guess you could, yeah. I, just, I so, never ruled out. <laughs> no, but there's literally a yoga class where you do yoga and then there's little goats around and they sort of come up to you and you stroke them and then they jump on top of you and all, you know, they do what goats do. Um, and actually, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's, I think it's a bit odd. I'm not sure I would enjoy it personally. But if that's sort of release that you need to... to Down. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. It looks like we're back. Excellent. Um, okay. Yeah, my uh, st the stream stopped. So yeah, uh, so, ah, unexpected Naomi. <laughs> so yeah, the um, something that's actually really important to just mention is not everything that we mention, like yoga, might not be your thing. There are it's a much broader ways that you can yeah. help yourself, and it's a lot. It's very personal to you. So yeah. yoga, you might not be flexible. You might not feel that yoga is something you can do. But one, if you if you had never tried it, give it a try. I've never tried it. But also, there might be other ways that you can definitely help yourself, even if it's just taking a break, putting times to review, going for a walk when the purpose of the walk isn't to go to a destination, it's just to walk, or doing yeah. things like that where you can really think. So ha having space and time to think and refresh and relax are definitely ways that you can make yourself more productive and also maybe find solutions that you weren't look thinking about before. So that are other ways what that you can find your centre. Yeah. What are the things that you do, Alex? What do you do when you've had a particularly stressful day or... You know, it's been busy, or what's so, your coping mechanism? I think um, there are a number of different coping mechanisms that I try to use. The first one that I always do is I make time at the end of a day. So I often I do quite a bit of stuff outside of work and outside of university. And when I was a student, it was, it was the same. So I always used to say, okay, I've got a cut off point. Unless I particularly not done good time management, I'm going to stop at nine o'clock tonight every night. That's the cut off. No work after then. And I'll spend at least an hour before I go to bed doing something I enjoy. Whether that just be simply talking and having refreshing myself, whether that be writing in a diary that I've just recently started doing, um, whether that be playing Xbox or something like that, or just something fun and different. That's one of the ways I coped and found myself able to cope. But mm. sometimes I think it's having a break from the type of thing you're doing at the moment for example xbox isn't always the best solution especially if it's very intensive on my brain so at the moment i do a lot of things when i'm thinking and so if i'm playing a game where i have to think a lot that's not going to be too much of a break for me what if i do things like i used to i play a game called forza horizon where i just drive and it's the same as walking without a purpose you just start thinking about things yeah. and that's a good way to just relax and refresh and have fun I just remembered that I've got Forza Horizon on my Windows PC now. Um, okay. But that's one of the things that I do as well to relax. You know, a bit of gaming every now and then is always useful. Um, I think we've talked about it before, I think, certainly outside the stream. But um, going for that walk, like you mentioned, that's so important as well. I mean, today it's terrible outside, so I'm really not that keen on it. But I will go for a walk, basically just to get out of the house. You know, we're, yeah. we're work I've, I'm lucky that I can work in the office every now and then. I was in the office yesterday. But if you're stuck on the desk all working hours, looking at a screen, looking at Teams or OBS or Zoom, whatever it is, get yourself out there. It's so important, you know, just the fresh air. 
um, getting the impressions of you know the nature around you or like where I am the cars and the trams around you uh, but just you know get get that experience and get that that moment in the day and it, keep it to you as well um, because actually one of the things and again this is personal to everybody uh, but my wife makes me walk right so she says I'm going for a walk you're coming okay Good. I'm sometimes a bit like a dog in that sense. Uh, so we go for a walk and we chat about stuff. But actually, sometimes I just need to get out myself as well. And just, you know, what I tend to do is put my headphones on, put some music on, and then just make a stroll around the block or whatever it is. And it's so refreshing and relaxing because you're in your own head. You're actually dealing with whatever it is that you're dealing with. You know, you get that processing time that way. And that's really important as well. So exercise just in general is really good, I would say. That processing time that you're saying about then, like uh, when I've gone on walks, especially when I'm with, uh, when I'm just thinking and not going to a specific place, for example, I say I'm not walking to go shopping, I'm just walking for the sake of walking. I'm surprised by how many problems are fixed or solutions I've found to things that have been bugging me that just having that space and time to think when you're not on your phone or you're not doing other things, yeah. I found so many solutions. And I think that's such a, great way of just taking stock or remembering something or um break it come up with breakthroughs for your writing or refreshing how you've uh, thought yeah. about things absolutely the um uh, old norse mythology and actually it's old germanic mythology as well uh, talked about the power of trees to absorb your troubles which is actually a brilliant idea mm. so um in uh, Germanic culture in particular, you had something called the Lebensbaum, which is the tree of life. And, you know, the tree of life was the place where people would worship. They would actually uh, do their ceremonies like burials and weddings and stuff like that around this massive tree. So it usually was an old oak tree or something like that. Um, but out of that culture came that understanding that if you were surrounded by nature, you would actually get rid of problems and issues. Um, and that feeling that you get, I get it, and I might get it because I'm aware of it now, but when you're walking in a particularly nice leafy tree area, like here in Sheffield, we've got like the Rifflin Valley, which is absolutely beautiful, lots of trees and things. You walk through there and you feel like, you know, the issues just don't matter as much when you're there. And you feel like you've got room to breathe and to percolate all those things in your brain really effective and really good way of doing it mm. um and there's also just general exercise you know i'm i'm not particularly uh, energetic in terms of exercise anymore my knees are shot but um a lot of people get a lot of fun out of jogging out of going cycling long distances out of going to the gym although that's a bit there's, difficult at the moment there's a sense of achievement out of doing it as well and mm. it's just it's just good energy i just i, I think I've, I've recently started doing it i've had to start for my exams um which is probably the time when i shouldn't have stopped but i stopped because i was working as well um and i think it's definitely i found such i found it was more productive when i'd gone to the gym especially when i hadn't pushed myself too hard so i think there's that balance there so if you chat yourself like you just r run and you're out of breath for the rest of the day, that's not going to help you be productive. But if you mm. do a, a, an amount that's good for you and like your level without trying to push too hard, yeah. I found that actually I found myself more productive, more happy. You feel accomplished. Yeah. It's a great way to start your day. I need to get my exercise bike out of the garage again, I think. I've put it in the garage because I didn't use it for a while. But it does actually really give you, you're right, it's that sense of achievement, isn't it? That you've actually done something right and that you've done something good. Um, so those are all the important things. The other things that we could talk about, I suppose, is how, and that's in particular now, you know, again, with the uh, pandemic as is. Talk to me, Alex, about how you stay in touch with your uh, network of people around you. So, you know, you've, we know that you've got a lovely girlfriend. What sort of things do you do in lockdown to stay sane and how do you stay in touch with people? That's an interesting question. Um... I think I could do more of this than I do in terms of meeting up with friends. Um, but I meet up. I make sure I meet up with other people. For example, my partner virtually. Um, so we did a lot of online gaming together, or just talking, or meets. Um, there's a great ways. Lots of great ways of playing board games online. It's something that I do for fun in my spare time. Uh, I was playing a game called Carbon City Zero last night on Tabletopia. 
um, which is a great way of playing board games for free. Um, uh, I guess What's just yeah, Tabletopia. Uh, yeah, Tabletopia dot com. I can put a link in once I finish talking. Um, I, there's lots of great ways though to get to get involved. I think usually something that I do to keep up with my network of people is I just sort of just volunteer for fun. And I think that's a good way to get experience and also give make yourself be rewarded because I think something that's really important is doing other things than just your coursework or your exams. Mm. Not too much. Probably I did too much at times because I then caused more stress. But doing other things can help make you feel accomplished and put other worries to, to bed. So sometimes you might be worried about, am I getting enough experience to make myself employable at the end? Well, if you volunteer, you can often have fun doing that voluntary activity. Yeah. making new contacts and also um, feeling rewarded and like it's different and there's still opportunities as well isn't there for yeah definitely you know, there's lots of opportunities so at the university we have the volunteering service uh, that's part of careers and employability service which is part of the centre of student life which is what we're a part of as well I would highly recommend getting in touch with them and seeing if there are any opportunities out there because you're absolutely right Volunteer, it's not just a great way of contributing to society, to your community, it's also a great way to build up a network of people. So if you're feeling particularly, you know, and so many people have that now, that feeling of isolation, of not being able to to interact with people, if that's you, look at ways to fix it, look at ways of, you know, how you can actually use things like volunteering to build up that network of people around think, you again. I think the great thing about volunteering in terms of finding your centre, it's not just about doing something different, but also because because it's voluntary, when the when the pressure starts hitting, so for example, let's say you've got a lot of assignments in for one period, you can take a step back and then come back mm -hmm. into it afterwards. So I always found that really nice to do um, because I could just turn it on and off when I needed to. Um, yeah. So I was able to be a youth worker and then literally just stop and yeah. then come back to it once I've done my assignments. Uh, if yeah. I was in a period when there was, I was in difficulties. If not, it's just a nice way of getting out of the house, doing something different and feeling rewarded for doing so and also build my mm. skill set. And the, uh, a very important partner in all this is the Union of Students as well, isn't it? Because yes. there's this idea that, you know, the university is closed and we can't do this, we can't do that. We both know that the Union of Students, just like us, is still operating, is still doing things. Science. I think a lot of societies are still meeting online uh, and doing things together. So, you know, reach out to them as well. We've just That's got the... Really when is way. the election? Is the now, election... Until Friday. Right, until Friday, so people can still vote. And getting involved with that, you know, it just gives you a different window on life. I think one of the things that's really dangerous in this COVID pandemic, wherever we are, and being a student, is that you get that tunnel vision. Oh, I have to get this great, I have to get that great, I have to do this, I have to do that. Try and break out of that tunnel vision, even if it is digitally, um, actually trying to achieve uh, other outcomes for your life is so important. And, you know, reach out because people are out there. And um, I've, I've asked you the question. I'll just highlight some of the things that I do. I think I'm at an advantage because I've, I've lived in the UK for 13 years now. Uh, but my family, of course, is still over in the Netherlands. Uh, I'm Dutch, in case you didn't know. So I'm used to being in touch with my family online, digitally. So uh, yeah. 13 years ago, I think we used Facebook and messenger do you remember messenger people used to use that at some point messenger um, so that's how i used to communicate with my friends really oh, so old-fashioned uh, but now we've got whatsapp which is also part of facebook uh we've got facetime so you know my brother i'm really fortunate my brother's got uh two uh boys twins and with facetime you can stay in touch with them right i can ring him up and say go on put the boys on and we can actually have a bit of a you know the babbling the two years old so it doesn't go much further than uh, bah, 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 bah. but that's fine you know because you you're part of the experience that way um so having those opportunities to, to chat with friends to reach out to friends is really important in my whatsapp group i'll just show I, I won't show you because it might get out of hand quite quickly but the first group that i've uh, interacted with the last time like in my whatsapp list is my friends from uh, secondary school so the seven of us that are still in touch, I'm 42 now, so that's pretty remarkable. Every morning we say good morning to each other. We actually have a chat about what's going on. 
uh, they're all in the Netherlands, so you know when they have a bit of work to do, when there's a front garden that needs digging up, like now, they talk to each other and say, "Oh, have you got a spare saw? Or you know, is there something I can do for you? Have you got a wheelbarrow?" Um, and that's just nice as sort of community to be part of because we've known each other for so long. You know, we could call each other names as well because we know exactly what's going on. Then there's another group uh, with three of my friends from university when I was over in Sheffield. We're still in touch. We used to get together each year for Christmas, things like that. So that's there. Then I've got a group with my colleagues over in Chesterfield. And we talk to each other all the time there about stuff that's going on in our lives. Book recommendations because we're proper librarians and all that. So that's a really useful group. Uh, then there's a, a chat with a colleague who just contacted me to update me on something. And then there's a chat with my family over in the Netherlands as well. So that just goes to show, you know, if you use those tools properly, and I'm sure we all use them anyway, if you use those tools properly, they can become real anchors in your life and they can actually help you remain at least a little bit sane during this madness that That's we're going through. really interesting because I don't keep up with a lot of the people who I'm friends with as much as maybe I should do. Um mm. But from, from my perspective, that sounds stressful to me because if someone's... I struggle with WhatsApp because people send me lots of messages on it. So I've got a WhatsApp group with my course mates. Um, I've got a WhatsApp group with my family. Uh, I'm not, I don't I don't feel like I want to spend... I don't feel like I have the time to keep up with all the messages and I don't like that. So, so for me, yeah. that's the opposite. I like to socialise, but in a way that's like limited. And So I will run social events with my friends, but... I won't keep up with them every day because I do things. And that's absolutely fair enough, you know. My wife doesn't like it either. So, for example, my family group, me and my wife are both in there. Um, and sometimes there's like 150 messages in an hour. You know, we're just talking about something that's happened. Uh, was the most recent thing. I think my dad had to have a procedure in the hospital. And then everybody's talking, and blah, 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 blah. There's only eight of us in that group. But before you know it, you've got 150 messages. And I stay on top of them because I don't mind, you know. I don't get the notifications on anymore. I just read when I see the... Um, God, I didn't think I was going to talk about notifications. So I don't get audio notifications. So I don't get a boom, boom, boom each time there's a message. But I do get a banner on my phone so I see that something's happening. Uh, and then I just check it every now and then and catch up with it that way. Uh, but yeah, it's different for all of us, you know. The I think one of the things that I love, uh, and I'm an app user, or a, a Mac user, uh, Apple user, FaceTime, I think is really good because it gives you that personal connection and it tends to be really stable and you can have a chat about stuff. Uh, I always have to laugh with some people when you do video call, they put the phone to their ear. I don't know if you have family members that do that. I don't video call my uh, family members because they live right, close by. Okay. Ah, that's true, yeah. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you get an ear and you think, yeah, I think we've done this about 500 times now. Maybe you could learn not to do that. Uh, but yeah, it's just fun, you know. It's a good way of staying in touch with each other, I think. Mm. I think um, something. there's two things I'd like to raise from what you've said mm -hmm. so far. First of all, society. So I think society is definitely underrated, and especially if you want to meet like-minded people with similar interests at university, especially if you're feeling lonely, or you don't have anyone who you know, or you might not have that friendship group to stay in contact with. Society is a great way of doing that, and there's lots of events that are still being run. So I'm just going to share my uh, screen. Uh, this is the uh, Dob Union's um, website where they get involved, and um, they've got sports events and society events. Obviously, sports events not happening at the moment, but society events still are. And so, for example, there's a catch up for the occupational therapy students, it's a Christian Union event. And so on, and you can just scroll through and see what events there are. And th there's lots of great communities out there who are really friendly and happy to meet. And so do have an explore. Online. I love the uh, the idea of an online baking night. That sounds like so much fun to me. Well, actually, there was my. Um, they actually work quite well because you can show your. So one person might present their baking, and then everyone else just either follows or bakes along, and then you can all share your own results and. You can share tips and stuff as you go. It's actually mm. really cool. But there's loads of yeah. societies. There's all these societies. I'm scrolling very quickly, I realise. Um, and so the societies out there for lots of people. So do do have a look. Uh, I'll put a link actually in the chat. Um, oops, in the live stream room. Doesn't make a difference. Well, like, nothing in there that people can see. What I like most about uh, the union and societies that we've got is there's something for everybody. 
Um, and as you know, we have quite a lot of mature students at university, people who've been to university for the first time. And there's still this sort of pervasive idea that unions are all about, you know, going out, getting drunk, uh, doing things that students do. That's changed like uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that started to change. Yeah. And students' unions are a lot more about being together, looking after each other, getting things done together. And I'm really pleased for that. You know, when I was yeah. a student, the culture was very much about, you know, getting uh, out and about into bars and things was really important. I think there's more to that. And I, I'm really pleased unions have taken on that mantle and doing so well as well because some of our societies are absolutely brilliant aren't they yeah i've been involved in a few societies and i don't drink and i've still enjoyed them obviously there are events where you can do that especially when you're in person uh, i don't know yeah. about now because i've not got attended an event recently um because i'm not involved in any at the moment but they um there isn't any events there might be events now where you can drink with people mm -hmm. but i think a lot of them about the social and the loneliness and even if you don't drink there's still lots out yeah. there for you because uh, yeah. i still enjoy it's it. not required anymore you know no. it, I, the, it used to be something that you had to do almost there was a bit of societal pressure on that and we don't have that anymore and i'm actually quite pleased about that it's uh, it's good so um the, the second thing that you i wanted to mention about what you said earlier is about uh, notifications and stress mm -hmm. and distraction so you talked about how you have notifications through and actually something that can stress you out at times is when they distract you um so almost developing a way to avoid those distractions so i've turned a lot of the notifications on my phone off almost all of them and when i work i almost go dark almost so i like i move my phone move my phone out of the way um and i make it so that people can't contact me unless they're urgent so there are some ways people can contact me and people who know to contact me can know how to get through to those yeah. um but that could keeping your focus when you're working can help you avoid stress because it can just make you more efficient absolutely um, it's for us it's yeah. noticeable as well alex you know if we're working all day in teams bing 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 i switch that off now you know i, I just don't well. want that anymore because if you do that i mean like at the moment 30 active different teams i've got about 50 chats going on at the same time mm -hmm. i don't need to be updated every second about everything i can catch up when i need to a, i think that's really important for me it's about controlling the information that you get you get information through a lot of sources now at all yeah. times and as a yeah. student you probably might not get as many but you might get messages from friends or from course mates asking things and so just learning to control when you receive the information and to get yeah. do it on your own terms can really yeah. be useful so for me like if i'm writing my essay the last thing i want is to see the pings of my friends talking about the football game they yeah. that may make me think oh football and then procrastinate where well, actually i would have yeah. focused otherwise and watched loot it up afterwards so yeah it's all about controlling okay. it for yourself then so yeah so there is an element there again i do think there's a balance there and you and i are probably quite different in this but it is still important to have those social interactions as well because we need to replace if you think about it, when we were all happy campers on the camping, uh, not on the camping, on, on the, the campus. campus, on the campus, happy campers on the campus, we used to bump into each other, right? You'd be walking yeah. through uh, KR in the atrium, which is a perfect space for it. And you, uh, I don't know about you, but I could walk through there and meet four, four, five, six people that I know that I could have a quick chat with about, you know, whatever it is that we want to have a chat about. I, I'm not quite and, as out there as you, so probably up to about three was what I was at eight, after six months here. Yeah. Um, but that's the usual. Well, the, yeah, but the point is that you, you don't have those sort of casual, uh, no. intermittent interactions anymore. And you, I do feel it's important to replace that, that sense yeah. of belonging and, you know, having the uh, apps or chats or whatever else is, is, is part of that, I think. But then, you know, you, you have uh, your team to talk to online. You talk to people that would organize your study fest with and all that sort of stuff. You're doing your podcast at the moment, so you have the interactions that come with that as well. Um, and you need to find a balance in that. You can It can drive you, like this morning, you recall when uh, our first chat this morning at 9.30 and I said, oh my God, I've already got 50 emails to check, mm -hmm. right? I now plan when I look at my email, I probably shouldn't have opened my email yes. <laughs> when I started talking to you, but that's just how it is. I only plan like half an hour a day and I only answer the emails that I find really important. If I don't think it's significant, 
Um, and this is no offense to anybody who's not heard from me for a while, by the way. <laughs> but if I don't think it's important enough to answer on the spot, I don't answer it on the spot. You know, I'll leave it for a bit. Um, and if I think it's not important, I just leave it completely because I just don't have the capacity or the time to to keep on top of all of it. You know, you've got to uh, make balance happen in your life. And I think balance is actually a really good word. There. You know, it's about finding that center that we've talked about and balancing things out properly. I think the word that I would use that I used before to describe this is personal control, which means that you are in charge of what it is. So you can set it to what you want. I think yeah. I set mine to be more restricted than you, but you have more information that comes to you than I do. So at the moment, I'm okay not having teams meet at all times because I don't get distracted. But for you, you probably do. So it's about finding that balance for you, not just in general. So it's about yeah. having control but you being able to you you being the person in control so you can set that to what you like depending on what your workload is and what what's going on so yeah. that's what i think is the key is you being the one in the driving seat not just letting your phone give you 200 notifications and you not controlling that all yeah if you want it's that like, you can have it but. yeah but currently they're both my phone and my uh, watch are on uh, sleep mode mm. or do not disturb mode because i don't need to be disturbed right now so yeah. yeah. So, is there any other things that we want to discuss then? So we talked about personal control. Yeah, there's one one really big thing I think, um, and I genuinely think this we could talk about this for six hours, right? With ease, uh, I could probably talk about this for six years because I probably did when I did my PhD. But we're so open to opinion now, um, and I'll try and explain that. Yesterday, I, I did this purely out of a sort of social experiment to see what would happen, right? We've all this week have been bombarded with uh, Meghan and Harry's uh, interview, right? Oprah Winfrey interviews Meghan and Harry, and uh, Piers, what's his name? Morgan. Idiot, as usual, trumps in like he always does. He's gone now, fortunately. Uh, but uh, sorry, that's my own opinion, by the way. I, I, I'm professional, I should have an opinion. But the simple thing is, that we can get dragged into conversations that become very negative or very um, polarizing very quickly, and we need to try and avoid that. So what I'm very active on Twitter. If you don't follow me on Twitter yet, do find me because it's quite fun. I think my Twitter stream is usually quite well received. And I put out there that I thought it was interesting. Uh, I can't remember how I phrased it. Um, but why go to the press? if the problem that you have is with the press. And we had a debate about that. So some of my colleagues, some of my friends reacted to that and we had a bit of a chat about that and that's absolutely great. But something like Twitter, something like Facebook, you get polarized so quickly and it is so dangerous these days that you feel you have to take sides, for example, in a debate and you don't always have to, right? It's like, um, Currently, there's a lot of, if I open my Twitter earlier and there's loads of stuff about the test and trace program costing 37 billion pounds, right? And there's a lot of people that say, oh, well, it's all going to uh, this lady Dido Harding and these people that sit in call centers and expensive consultants, and that's not right. That's an opinion, you can have that opinion, but you also need to understand what that money is actually being spent on if you form that opinion. And a lot of people are not aware that a lot of that money is also being spent on the testing centers down the road, right? Or on the testing that we have at the university or, you know, all that infrastructure around that. That's going to cost money. And it's really easy to be swept away in these debates and form an opinion and, you know, get dragged one way or another and actually come off that center that you've got. Try and avoid some of that. Try and not get dragged into a lot of that debate all the time because we live in such interesting times in that sense. And I'm actually a huge proponent of uh, social media. I think social media can be really powerful, can be really useful tools. Like at the moment, uh, I'm using it uh, in a sort of professional sense to promote open access and open educational resources. I think that's really important. We need more talking about that. We need to discuss these things more. In that sense, social media is absolutely wonderful. When it comes to these polarizing debates, it becomes a lot more difficult because you might all of a sudden find that your um, friend or your uncle or someone you know has the complete opposite position to what you have, right? So Brexit, for example, really 
showed this split in society, either before Brexit or against Brexit, and people actually had falling out over Brexit, right? I've experienced that. I'm very pro-European because I am European, so I was very anti-Brexit, and I discovered that it would actually hurt people around me that I had that opinion. So that's something that I just want to address as well. I don't know if you have any thoughts now, Alex. You're a bit less active, I think, on on these social media, but how do you see the impact of social media? What, what can you do to deal with that better? I think the impact of social media, social media is very positive on the whole, but there is negative issues. So I'm not actually overly active. I'm not active on Facebook. I don't post on Instagram, and I only occasionally post on Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, and generally there to promote myself rather than just talk about and weigh in on issues. So for me at the moment, I've tried to stay out of it um, because I do have opinions on a lot of things, but currently I don't want to cause myself the stress because I know people will disagree with what I say or they may disagree. But I know that Twitter is a place where people often come at each other with words and neither party are going to persuade each other quite often. So I tend to try and stay out of it um, and not cause that issue because at the moment I want to focus my time on what I want to. And I know that there are things where, where I want to help sway people, but I do them through different means at the moment. Mm. I do think Twitter is something that I will probably go into more when I'm not studying. Um particularly posting and applying to other people. But for me at the moment, it's not something that I'm too involved in. Mm. Um, I do think it's interesting hearing about people who have a lot of stress from comments. So um, a lot of people, but when, when the post blows up, even if it's a very positive post, some people will reply to them and be negative about things, with things that there's no reason to. Internet trolls or people who just want to cause people harm. And people tend to focus on those negative things a lot more than the positives. And that can cause stress. And I've heard of lots of people who've taken breaks on social media and they feel so much better because of it. And I'm just, yeah. at the moment, I'm glad that I'm not overly involved in it. Um, mm. And I and I think I'm glad that I'm spending my time elsewhere at the moment. But yeah, we'll see. I was, I was literally speaking to someone the other day who said that they were um, staying awake at night, worrying about stuff that was going on on their social media feed. I think if you get to that stage, you need to step back from it. You need to stop using it in the way that you're using it. Um, and, you know, I've studied social media. I've lived through when social media blew up and when it became a thing, right? And I've actually professionally investigated the power of social media, the infrastructures, the techniques, the technology. So I understand social media in and out. But it took me years to realize that it is actually really important to understand with social media that things are polarized if you look at twitter and you used to have 127 characters if i remember well 140 uh, is what it was when i started right. but i didn't 140 yeah started. right so you used to have a limited amount of characters you can only say so much so it's going to be polarizing right you can't actually give the depth of what you want to do they've actually addressed that now by adding a new feature not played around to the app i will try it out at some point um, but yeah, that, I think that's really important to understand that when you use social media, you have a responsibility that you need to take serious. And you need to understand your position on social media, not just with what you put on it, but also with how you consume what's on it. And you have to have that understanding of it being a polarizing platform. I think what you said there about the person staying up at night links to something I wanted to talk about in the in this discussion today which is about what i try to worry about my approach to worrying about things which is control i mentioned that word earlier but i tend to try and focus on things that are only in my control anything that isn't i don't worry about that until it is so maybe i might remind myself of something that isn't so let's say i'm doing a, a piece of group work group works often stressful people find them stressful all the time mm -hmm. um if I've given other people tasks to do, um, I say given, I given. No, if we've agreed that someone else has a task to do, then um, let then I'm not going to worry about that. I might put a note in my calendar to say, okay, here's what I can remember about this, think about it, but it's not going to help me if I worry about it and worry if they're doing it or not. They've either done it or they haven't, and I can check with their progress in a few days, and I can decide that time when I'm going to think about that again. So yeah. I think... What the key is for me with the social media debate and also other things is only worry, from my perspective this is, only worry about or 
be concerned about the things that are in your control and that are important. Don't worry about the things that are outside of your control because yeah. you can't change them. So exactly. It's zone of zone of influence, isn't it? So, you know, only there's different zones of influence and spheres of influence. But you're absolutely right. Only you know, put energy into the things that you can amend, that you can control. There's no point in worrying about things that you can't actually control because it's going to happen anyway, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So an, a good indicator of this is exams, for example. So I know lots of people on my course, the first time that they heard about the, um, about as soon as they finished the exam, the first thought that comes to their mind is, when am I going to get the results? When, mm -hmm. when do I find out if I passed or failed? And to me, it doesn't matter. I don't, I, I care a little bit, but I try to take that off my mind. I say I don't care, but the truth is I do care. I want to know what I've got, but I take that away out of my mind. I forget about it because I can't change what I've, the marker has. There's nothing I can do. So why spend three weeks worrying about it when I could spend three weeks being productive elsewhere and then just find out? I'm finding out the same time regardless. So that's just one approach and an example of where that mindset can help you focus other things. Yeah. Um, that actually raises some interesting points, uh, and I think this is a good moment to look at it. Group work and other things related to, um, you know, performing at university, academic skills, digital skills, information skills. Alex, where am I going? Uh, the podcast? No, no study fest. Study fest oh, yeah. you've been, we need to get you out of podcast world for a bit. Um, would you mind showing uh, both study fest, and then after that we can show people... Uh, where to find well-being information. Is yes. that a good idea? I shall yeah. do that indeed. So let's uh, go to the screen capture. Okay then, so I'll, start, I'll get a new tab with the library homepage on. Just a new window. Um, so I'll show you the guide first. So we've got a StudyFest LibGuide and there's a number of different ways to find information about StudyFest. Um, but StudyFest is an upcoming series of events uh, which will be between March the 22nd and March the 24th. Most importantly, there are a lot of events all throughout these days, and I can guarantee you, no one, unless they have doing, unless they they can be in two places at once, can attend all the events at the same in one go. So the events of Study Fest will be recorded, so whether you can make the days and times or not, you can watch them back afterwards, and they'll be located here. I'll show you how to get here in a second, though. So effectively we have lots of just, events yeah just to mention they'll only be available for a certain period of time won't they i don't think we've set a date yet but no. i think the first week of april is it normally about two and a half weeks that we have it up it's um 28 days that we have it up for generally so if it right. finishes so if it's from the 22nd of march it would then be the uh, around about the 20th of april uh, right. would be the one to go down. I haven't got a date for that, maybe around that date. So four weeks yeah. after the uh, date of the final session, we'll say. Yeah. So. And we'll put the, the links everywhere. Yeah. So on so the, the study fest, as Tim mentioned, has got three themes, digital skills, information skills, and academic skills. And we have uh, classes about and workshops about how you can effectively communicate digitally, how you can better use the Microsoft 365 products that are available to you as a student. Um how you can use design to support communication through posters and also getting messages out there. We've got a podcast releasing um, about digital capabilities and how you can improve your digital skills and learn, learn to self-learn skills uh, as part of the Success as a Student podcast. We've got a workshop about making the most out of the software called LinkedIn, which is a really useful software. and I, It's the one social media I currently actively use and there's good reason for that as a student. Uh, and then you've got a workshop about being successful as a student that I'm running as well. Uh, the second day is all about research and informational skills. So there's lots of, um, th these are being run by the academic librarians generally, uh, but all about the research trail from when you plan your search strategy to finding the sources to deciding whether these sources are actually useful and reliable to so using these sources within your arguments and then how to cite and reference the sources that you've got. Uh, and then the final day, Academic Skills Day, uh, and we talk more about academic writing and also academic skills. So we've got a session about proper planning, uh, sustainable development goals and why they're relevant to your career, and which I think is really useful. I'm looking forward to, um, I think I might be able to attend half of it after our live stream finishes that day. We've got a session about EndNote, which is an amazing tool for storing uh, references. 
uh, my academic writing workshop, a note taking workshop, reflection, and proofreading. So there's lots on. How there's one missing, Alex. There's one missing, and I've just realised that I've still not put it on. Uh, we start the Wednesday with the brilliant uh, Derby English, yes, English Language Centre uh, about academic voice and how to find your academic voice. That's such a good session. People really should go and attend that. That'll be on this guide, hopefully today, uh, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. So if you are interested in any of these sessions, you can literally click, click the register. So underneath each of them, there'll be a part where it says register. So if we go to, um, let's go to my session. If we go to this one, how to be successful. Just it has to be your session, yes. <laughs> you click on it, there's a link to where the workshop is, some information about it, and also where you can register for it. So if you are interested, do register uh, for the session. If you can't make it, then anyone who's registered will get sent a link to the recording, but the link to the recording will be on the guide anyways. Okay, so how to actually find that guide then? Um, so if you want to find that guide, start from the library homepage. Uh, you can scroll down and you go all the way down to find subject information, which is on the right hand side of the page here. And if you scroll down again, you can see there's a uh, on the bottom right again, there's skills guides. If you click on that and scroll down, there's a guide here called Study Fest Spring 2021. And I will link that into the chat as well. Um, so you can also find our events on the um, calendar of events, which I'll put in the chat as well which uh, if you scroll down and go to enhance your learning, learn online at the library and academic and research skills workshops. There's a calendar of events there with all the events that are being run as well as our other events. Okay then. Yes, very Anything good, thank add, you. Tim Zelstra. Um, well, Alexander Wood, um, I'm looking at the figures, by the way. People are already signing up, which is great. Uh, there's yeah. a few little tweaks to change still to come in a couple of the rooms and stuff. So do check if you've signed up for a session, whether you've got the right link and all that. You will get an email the day before, I believe, that will confirm it. Um, one of the things I also think that I would like to highlight is how students get to the Wellbeing Center. But actually, let's talk about that first, uh, because I think this is really important. So. We have, as the University of Dad, we have a brilliant well-being centre with brilliant stuff in it. I interact with them on an almost daily basis, but certainly weekly, and they are there to help you out. So I think it's really important in the context of this stream that we also talk about what happens if you're really struggling, if you're not actually able to, you know, use the things that we've talked about today to find your centre. If you're getting anxious, if you have mental health issues anyway, um, if you've got things like, you know, is dyslexia holding you back, for example, or dyscalculus. We have a brilliant well-being service for that, and they can really help you out. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to ask. I was going to ask if you had ever had any experience with the well-being service, but I don't think that's an appropriate question. Uh, so no. what I... No, so what, what I will say is that I've helped students access the service, and I know that for countless of them that did actually engage with the well-being service it's made a significant difference to their ability to actually complete their studies um, you know people who were in such a crisis situation that they wanted to drop out that they felt that they couldn't carry on just contact the well-being service and, and let them see if they can help you and how they can help you they will always offer you advice and it's really important that you make use of that the other people that do that are the uh, Union of Students that we talked about before. They've got a wonderful advice service as well. Again, people that I interact with on a regular basis, really good, really professional. Uh, they also help out with things like academic offences and things like that. So if you feel like you need some support from them, you can contact them as well. Uh, and Alex has very kindly put up the support page there, or a, a, what's it called, a slide. And actually, yeah, the personal academic tutor, I've almost forgotten, I certainly shouldn't forget. You've all got a personal academic tutor. Reach out to them as well when you're struggling, when you find it difficult, um, and they will be able to point you in the right direction as well. So I'll show Is you... Is there anything... Yeah. Oops. Let me show you the, uh, the relevant link. So personal academic tutoring, you should know who they are. If not, um, contact uh, the head of your year. Uh, and you can find out who they are. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know who they are. They should offer you meetings and they're good to meet yeah. with one-to-one. -one. If you've got issues, they can give you advice as well. Uh, uh, 
No, I wouldn't go to them for well-being things. Um, they're there mainly for academic studies. So if you've got issues with deadlines, for example, or questions, uh, things like that, or you've got any feedback, they're a good source to go to as well as your program reps. Um, you've also got the well-being service here. Oop. Let me just hide that page. Um, you've got the well-being service here, and it's got this link that I've got here, which I'll put in the chat, has um, links to the opening hours, the different phone numbers, uh, and emails and so on, and where you can request an online appointment. I believe they're also open on site again now. So they were working remotely, but I think they're actually on site again as well now. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to uh, post that link into the chat if anyone is interested. So I'll change the screen temporarily. Uh, the other people that work for the same uh, unit in the university, the registry, that are really useful are uh, the student centres. So, you know, if you have any questions about the process of studying or uh, all sorts of different advice that they can provide as well. So make sure to get in touch with the student centres as well. And you should all have the contact details for them anyway. So yeah, here's the advice page. You can book appointments with them. Um, and they've also even with events. That's quite good. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, they, uh, they're very useful. Uh, lots of people have found success by wor yeah. working with them. And um, if they if you do approach one of the wrong services, one of the things that they're really good at is they can take you to the right services. So they yeah, can sign post you to where you need to go. So I'll yeah. put that in the chat as well. Yeah, so th that's, you know, I think it is really important that we acknowledge that there is help out there. Uh, because sometimes you need help. I, I will never forget, you know, when I was doing my undergrad, I did three different undergrad studies. Um, and it wasn't until I did my third one. <clears throat> Sounds bad, doesn't it? When I started my, my third uh, attempt at getting a, a bachelor's degree, it was only then that I actually reached out. I had a really good tutor, personal academic tutor there. I reached out, I explained some of the things that I was struggling with, like uh, I had some financial issues, um, all sorts of different things were going on and they actually helped me, they really, really helped me. And that was back in uh, when, when you know, people still use stone tools and uh, we didn't have computers. Um, but yeah, that you know, just reach out to me because that can make such a difference. I literally screwed up uh, two attempts at getting a bachelor degree by not reaching out. Don't be that person. Don't be like me. You know, make sense. Uh, make use of the people that are there to help you out. So yeah, and at Derby, we're genuinely we're blessed with excellent, excellent stuff there. So do go out and help uh, yourself to their services. I would say. Yeah, it's definitely not too late to ask for help as well because I can I can see some people might be thinking, well, it's already too late. I should have asked for it earlier. Mm. Well, it, if earlier was the best time, now is the second best time. Yeah. It might be a good time, actually, as well, to explain something that's really fundamental as well. Um, so if you're struggling with assessments, for example, written assessments this is particularly relevant for, there are two ways that you can actually get yourself some more time. One is a late submission request, which uh, you fill out the paperwork for it, a form, basically. Uh, there's guidance on the website somewhere to help you. But you can talk to the student center to uh, get some help and advice on that. A late submission request. Seven days. In my, yeah, and in my opinion, you almost always get that. If you have a reason why you can't submit on the day that you were going to submit, let a very concrete example, we're studying at home and you've had kids at home and they've been needing a laptop and you've just not found the time to work on the assignment when you wanted to work on it. The kids have now gone to school, so now you've all of a sudden got that bit of time to work on it, but you won't make the deadline apply for a late submission request, explain what the situation is, and you should get that. The other one that we have available is uh, more intense, I suppose, is the uh, extenuating circumstances request. Mm -hmm. And extenuating circumstances, you need to prove the impact on you by whatever the circumstance was. So it's it goes to what they call the... Uh, is it the assessment board? board? Is it the assessment board? I don't program? know. I, 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 I don't can't think remember. it goes to your program. I think it goes above that. Yeah, it, it's sort of faculty-wide, uh, college-wide thing where it goes to. But they will address the uh, request there. And that's for more serious instances. And again, students are sometimes really afraid of 
asking for help or applying for these circumstances, extenuating circumstances. I've been giving advice to students with uh, this in the past. 99% of the time when you as a student think, I, I could really, you know, I'm struggling. I don't think I'm going to make this deadline. This is why. The why is valid reason for asking for extenuating circumstances. The worst thing that can happen is that it gets turned down, but then at least you've made your academic staff aware that there is an issue and they will then hopefully try and contact you and work things out in a different way, maybe through a late submission request, something like that. But signal, if you are struggling, if you don't think you're going to make deadlines, if you're really under the cosh, if you like, with everything, signal that. Don't silently suffer whatever is going on. Make sure that we as a university are aware and then we can try and help you out. Um, it's, it's actually interesting what you're saying there because it links to something that I discussed uh, with Caroline in the episode about organisation for the Success as a Student podcast, um, which is that is a situation you might be able you might get yourself into uh, where you feel there's not enough time. Um, what we recommend doing is if you find yourself that you've had this before or that you're having this for the next assessment try to improve your organisation in a, in a way that will help you to reduce the stress on you uh, towards the end mm. of the deadline. Uh, so if you've had something happen before, reflect on it and try to use organisation to reduce the stress that comes. So if that means starting yeah. earlier, if that means trying to finish early, so if something comes up, you're okay. Because that's all about helping your mental health and that's mm. a very interesting episode of the podcast that I'm looking forward to publishing in a few weeks. Yeah, being organised just helps in general with um, with managing yourself as well, I think. Um, yeah, so lots of advice, really good tips, I think, there. I found this really um, interesting thing to talk about. I don't know how you found it, Alex. I'm always really Insightful. passionate about this. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know if we have anybody uh, asking questions at the moment. Have you got any questions, Alex, before we finish? Uh not really. I think um, I don't think I have. I don't ask many questions. I tend to answer questions. I tend to ask questions. I don't tend to ask for support, which is um, me. I don't tend to ask for support. I tend to try and improve mm. it myself. That's the way I do things. You should uh, put that in your review targets that you need to ask for support a bit more. I ask for support. I ask for. Uh, I'm, I'm, I reevaluate things a lot, and something that I yeah. do to try is I evaluate when I need support, and I will ask for support without asking for support. So, for yeah. example, if I review something and work out in a job profession that it can't be done in time or that there's too much on, I will ask a different way. I won't say, oh, I need support. I'll say, can we shift the deadline? Can we be flexible? All, uh, all, all 24 podcasts are coming out on the 22nd of March, aren't they? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that is the example, is the timing for the podcast yeah. episodes. So yeah, I, I knew you were thinking that. about that. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, I, f I find this a really important topic. I'm very passionate about it. Uh, do realize that the library is not the place to ask for this sort of support. Um, even though we have really knowledgeable staff and we are able to give you advice uh, on the spot and direct you into the right place, like Alex said, we do do triaging. Uh, but we're, you know, we're not there to help you out with this sort of thing. We've got really good professionals. Reach out to them, talk to them. They are brilliant. Let them do that thing when you are struggling. Um, and in general, you know, try and, and keep your center, try and keep that middle point and, and stay focused and concentrated. And remember more than anything else that you've got to have fun. Yep. Try and Very make important. it so you have fun whilst you study. Because you learn, you learn best when you have fun. Tim Zelsey, yes. 2019. Was that so, 2019 that I said that? It might well be. Actually. We made a video about it. It's the first video I made since when I started working here. We should do another video on that, yeah. I see titles. Are we going to wave again? Uh, I'm just going to... Yeah, you can wave, but you, no one can see it at the moment. Um, I, know, I need to know when they can see it. Yeah, so I'll tell you <laughs> So, yeah, today, today's live stream was brought to you by the University of Derby Library Skills team. Uh, thanks to Tim Zalstra for all, all the discussions and points you've raised today. Um, thanks also to Naomi for help with the series. Uh, I'm also here, Alex Underwood. Uh, Stephen Plant, thank you for the amazing graphics you've done. Uh, he brought you all the graphics and is doing some great graphics for the podcast as well. Um, I'm going to put the links that were mentioned in the stream in the description of the video, which I'll do that as soon as we finish today, uh, but they are in the chat already for anyone watching live. So, back to me and you, Tim, and we're going to say goodbye. Bye bye. Oh, hand. Look after yourself. Oh, oh, that hand. It's inverted, isn't it? For what we can see. Say goodbye, everyone.
Bye-bye. See you.